Linux is my IDE, and Vim is my text editor. So I wanted to give a little tour of a minimal IDE or a, or operating system with with minimal software. You'll see that there's not much here, but I think that it has everything that's needed to do work as a data scientist. So let's log in. So this is the desktop environment. This is DWM. I don't have a wallpaper. The reason I don't have a wallpaper here is that I don't really need one. Um, I've been in the rising world before. Uh, when you get a wallpaper, um, at least for me, I had to worry about uh, the theme of everything else. That means making sure that my terminal had the same theme as my wallpaper. And there are applications to do that, things like PyWall, but that's just one more thing to have to think about. The purpose of this build is just to get things done. This is the simple terminal. If you go to the subreddit Unix porn, you'll see people with terminals that are transparent or have uh, shadowing for, uh, from their compositor. Uh, no transparency is needed here because there's no wallpaper to look at. This is just a terminal. It executes commands, which is all I need my terminal to do. So far, this build looks minimal. The one thing that does have uh, quite a bit of configuration is my NeoVim configuration. So this is uh, pretty similar to the NeoVim I've shown before in previous videos, but most of my time is really spent editing text. So making sure that my text editing is as comfortable as possible is something that means a lot. Because I put a lot of effort into editing text, I put a lot of effort into making sure that that text editing process is smooth. Something else you'll notice is that the font is, is a nice looking font. It's source code pro. Other than my NeoVim theme, the font is the only aesthetic manipulation I've done to this IDE. So the operating system is Debian. I've used uh, quite a few Linux distributions. I don't really think that getting the Linux distribution right is a big deal. It just so happened that I settled on Debian. A couple things that Debian does have going for it, thinking about data science, is that there's a strong Debian slash R community. And so I can be pretty confident that the R packages from the Debian uh, repositories are going to be stable. Another thing I like about Debian is that it's popular. So there's a large community behind Debian. Lots of times it's pretty easy to find answers to questions I have. Also for new software, there's usually a way to get that software with apt-get. Another application that this IDE has is a browser. So Firefox could be launched uh, with the menu. It's launched over on Workspace 9. I tend to work with my Windows stacked. So even though it opened up on, uh, on Workspace 9, I, uh, I tend to have everything in one workspace and stacked on one workspace. So I just kind of scroll through uh, the, different, the different windows I have open. And uh, recently I've, been, I've also been hiding my uh, DWM bar on the top. I didn't add the, that in the configuration. You can add on your configuration whether you want the bar on the top or the bottom, um, whether you want it hidden or not. There's also patches to add um, some padding around the bar. But again, most of my time is spent just editing text. And I'm not too worried about bouncing around uh, to different workspaces. I don't, you'll notice I don't have a system tray to see what's happening with my audio or network configuration or my battery life. Um, I usually use applications in the terminal to tell me that when I want to know that. Um, so lots of times I just uh, I just hide that bar, Alt B to hide the bar. So this is this is uh, usually what what I've got open. I've got a terminal and I've got a browser open. Um, usually when I'm 
working, I'll be working in Tmux, so I'll have uh, multiple uh, Tmux sessions open. Maybe I'll have uh, NVim open in one Tmux window and uh, the shell open. Uh, what do I have installed here? The shell opened in an another terminal. I, I guess I don't normally have uh, top running. Sometimes I'll have uh, busy data. I'm going to pull some data just to, to show what busy data looks like. So this is Visi data. So if I'm working on some data manipulation, maybe I'll just have the data open in Visi data, and I'll be uh, working on some kind of script. I also have this set up to work well with uh, with uh, Python editing. Uh, this is something I've showed off a little bit more in in other videos. I've also got this set up with with R uh, specifically uh, NVMR. And so um, this can run. This can run R. So now that I've given a little tour of this, I'm going to close this. This is all open in VirtualBox, and I'm going to show you how to install this in a VirtualBox, so you can play around with this and get comfortable before maybe you install it on your main desktop machine. Before I actually show the install of Debian, I wanted to talk about what is happening here. So uh, once Debian is installed, I'll download this DWM setup script and just run the commands in this script. Uh, it's a little less than 100 lines, but I thought it'd be useful to just go over what's in here so it's, uh, so it's not mysterious what's happening. The first thing is just to do a apt-get update and upgrade. Uh, all of this here is X things. When you launch X server, you use the command start X, and so there's lots of things that you need to get a window manager running. This line is just a number of utilities I tend to use, curl, neovin, make, tmux, git, pip, neofetch, and stow. Uh, and feel free to add more utilities and um, edit this as much as you'd like. This is really uh, pretty basic. If you feel like you want to add more, uh, feel free to add more. This is just something that I've been very comfortable with. This chunk here is an R chunk. It seems like a lot, and uh, there's a little bit of extra work that I did here to make sure that the most recent uh, version of R is installed. So this is going to be R4. And the way that packages w work in Debian, at least the way I understand it, is that they kind of your, your version number is glued to the latest uh, Debian release. So if we're in Buster right now, uh, the Debian version Buster, then you have to be using the R release that was available in that Buster release. And so that's uh, an older version of R, like three point uh, something. I can't I can't remember which which version it is. I like to have the latest version of R, or at least a more recent version of R. And so the work done here is to make sure that the backports are set up, so that you can use the most recent version of R. This uh, single line is to install OpenBLAST. OpenBLAST makes the linear algebra operations go really fast. This chunk is to make a directory for nvim and then to pull my nvim configuration my nit.vim this is the one aesthetic thing i do to the ide i pull a font 
and install it. So this is the uh, source code pro. These three sections are the three suckless pieces of software I use. ST for the terminal, DWM for the window manager, and DMenu for the application launcher. Normally all you would have to do is clone CD into the directory you just cloned and then do a sudo make install. But I wanted to also make sure that the font was consistent between my terminal, DWM, and DMenu. And so what's happening here with said is that I'm inserting a line that sets the font. And then here I'm deleting the old line, the line that had the other font. It's a, it's a monospace font by default. I think it's just called monospace. Uh, same idea with DWM. The idea here is that I inserted the font in the two places it needed to be set for fonts and dmenu font, and then deleted line 8 and line 8 again, which had the two lines that were the old font. And then I did a sudo make install. For dmenu, same idea, insert source code pro and delete the line that had the old font, and then sudo make install. Vimplug is necessary to get nvim working with its uh, plugins. So this command here is simply to download vimplug. These are all the pip installed packages that make Python text editing smooth. Jedi is for auto, auto completion, Flake 8 is for linting, isort is to sort the libraries that you're importing, pyenvim is a Python nvim integration, and black is I don't know what it's called technically, uh, but I run I run uh, AL lint fix and it fixes uh, it fixes my Python. Maybe it's a maybe it's a fixer. I can use the AL plugin to AL fix my Python script and it cleans it cleans up the formatting. Sto I'm not going to get into what Sto does, but the only thing I Sto is nvim, and that's going to be in the dot files directory because we're using X. There needs to be a X session file. So all that's happening here is I'm adding three lines. The standard shell, shebang bin sh, X term, and execute dwm. That's all that needs to be in the X session file. And then finally I install a browser. There's some instructions here. I know it's a, a little bit of a taboo to have comments in a script, but if this is something that is unfamiliar, I think it's useful just to have some helpful instructions here. You have to run start x to get wm opened, alt shift enter to get st open, alt shift c to close a window in st, well, any window, and alt p to get dmenu running. So if you wanted to launch Firefox, you would just run alt p and then t start typing Firefox and you'll see it on your top bar. And finally, you'll have to run plug install on your nvim, on your init.vim file. So I'm going to go through all of this right now, uh, starting with uh, installing Debian. So you can get Debian from debian.org and just click the download link. and you'll see this ISO. I've already got this downloaded, so I'm not going to re-download it, but you just hit OK. And that's going to be the ISO that you use to feed VirtualBox. Or if you're installing it on your desktop, this is what you flash the USB with. Really easy. So in VirtualBox, I'm just clicking New. I'm going to name this Deb XBZF. and the type is Linux, the version is a Debian 64-bit. Memory, I usually like having at 8 gigabytes. I'll just make this around 100. And then click Start. This is the ISO that's downloaded from the Debian page. You can just click on add and you'll find it in your, your downloads. 
but since it's already selected here, I don't really need to do that. I'm going to select the ISO here and start. As far as the Debian install goes, I'm just going to fast forward this. Lots of, lots of this is really just waiting for installs to happen. So I'm just going to take off the audio and start installing Debian. If there's anything that's not standard, I'll hop in and talk about that. But I'm just going to run through the Debian install and uh, speed up speed up the video. So this is where I diverge from the standard Debian install. I don't install the desktop environment and I don't install a print server. All I have checked on this whole list is standard system utilities. So now Debian's installed. I'm just going to log in. And now I'm going to download the DWM setup script. Out of the box, VirtualBox doesn't have any kind of ability to do copy and paste. That's something I'll show how to set up after this. So as a convenience, there is a tiny URL here that links to the raw code here. This just makes it so you don't have to type as much. So the script was downloaded. I'm going to rename this. Now I just need to make it a executable. And at this point, the script can be run. As this runs, you'll notice that a few prompts come up. Just click enter through those prompts. Except for this one. This is asking for your password. All right, the install is done. So all we have to do is type star x. And here it is. One thing you'll notice, though, in VirtualBox is the screen never goes above this, this size, which is uh, pretty annoying. Uh, but before we fix that, I wanted to go ahead and install some NVIM plugins. And then we'll, we'll fix that issue. One thing you'll see when I first get into this text is there's going to be some warnings that come up. All those warnings have to do with the fact that none of the plugins have been installed for NVIM. So you'll see it can't find the, colors, the color scheme 1. 
That's just because we haven't run plug install to install that yet. And there's a few other things that will come up. Just uh, hit enter through those. So here, uh, just hit colon, plug install. And you can tab complete. All right, that's ready to go. Colon WQ to quit. I uh, actually do WQA to close to close everything. Now when we type NVIM, everything is working fine. And we can look at our NVIM configuration and everything looks great. So now let's fix this uh, dimension issue with VirtualBox. The hope is that you'll install this on VirtualBox and play around with it, get used to it. And once you're comfortable, you can install it on your own desktop. So I'm thinking that you'll be working with this uh, for a little bit of time on, on VirtualBox. So it'd be best to be as comfortable as possible and not have to deal with this squished display. So I have this gist vboxguest.sh. With this script, you do have to go to devices and click on insert guest editions. And once that's done, then you download this and run it. So I just downloaded this script and renamed it renamed it vbox.sh. Now it's ready to run. One thing to note is that this has a shutdown command at the end of this. The virtual box needs to be shut down for this installation to work properly. And again, just click enter through the prompts. So this should be ready to go. Let's give it a shot. You just need to go to view and full screen mode. So everything will still look squished until we log into DWN. Initially it might look squished still and then it will blow up to the full screen. So now we have a full screen and you can get you can get working and figure out what works for you. I'll repeat what I said at the beginning. Linux is my IDE and Vim is my text editor. With this setup, even though this this is technically a Linux distro and we've got a window manager and things like that. The idea here is that with Linux as your IDE, you have the world's most powerful IDE. And this has worked well for me as a data scientist. Thanks for watching.